Chapter 10 Final Instructions Sutra One day the master summoned his disciples Fa Hai, Chi Chang, Fa Ta, Shen Hui, Chi Chang, Chi Dong, Chi Chi, Chi Tao, Fa Chen, Yi Fa Ju, and said to them, You are not like other people after my passage into extinction. You should each be a master in a different direction. I will now teach you how to explain the Dharma without deviating from the tradition of our school. First, bring up the three classes of Dharma doors and then use the 36 pairs of opposites so that whether coming or going, you remain in the Bodhi Mandala. While explaining all the Dharmas, do not become separated from the self nature. Should Someone suddenly ask you about a drama. Answer him with his opposite. If you always answer with the opposite, both will be eliminated, eliminated, and nothing will be left, since each depends on the other for existence. Commentary: One day the master called his room entering disciples together for a talk. They are called room entering disciples because. They had received the transmission of the Master's Dharma and were therefore permitted to enter his room. The first of the ten was Fa Hai. You remember him. He edited the Sixth Bajrak Sutra and was a great disciple. He put his name at the head of the list here because no matter what, he had to be number one. Chi Cheng was the Dharma thief who later reformed and joined the Master Fa Ta was the arrogant bhikshu who had read Lotus Sutra over 3,000 times but couldn't bring himself to put his head on the ground before the master even once. Shen Hui was a 13-year-old child who had talked back to the master. There was also Chi Chang, Chi Tung, and Chi Chi, also known as Flying Cat Chang, Chi Tao, Fa Chen, and Fa Chu. These were the master's 10 great disciples. The master said, You ten men should each be a master teacher in a certain direction and receive offerings there from humans and gods. I will now teach you how to spread the Dharma without straying from the tradition of our studying enlightenment Dharma door teaching. In speaking the Dharma, the master went on, The most important thing is to base your speech on the self nature. How does one do this? Suppose someone asks you a question about the Buddha Dharma, whatever his principle may be, is bound to have an opposite. You should answer him with the opposite Dharma. For example, coming and going are relative concepts. Without a coming there is no going. Without a going there is no coming. Coming is the prerequisite of going, and going can only result from coming. Since the opposites depend upon each other for existence. Ultimately, the both will be cast out, cancelling each other out so that nothing is left behind. There will be no coming and no going, for there will be no place left to go. Sutra, the three classes of Dharma doors are the heaps, the realms, and the entrances. The five heaps are form, feeling, perception, impulses, and consciousness. The twelve entrances are the six sense objects outside, forms, sounds, smells, tastes, tangible objects, and objects of the mind. And the six sense organs within, eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind. The eighteen realms are the six sense objects, the six sense organs, and the six consciousnesses. The self-nature is able to contain all dharmas. It is the store enveloping consciousness. If one gives rise to a thought, it turns into consciousness and the six consciousnesses are produced which go out the six organs and perceive the six sense objects. Thus, the 18 realms arise as a function of the self-nature. If the self-nature is wrong, it gives rise to, in 19, uh, to 18 wrongs. If the self-nature is right, it gives rise to 18 rights. Evil functioning is that of a living being, why good functioning is that of a Buddha. What is the functioning based on? It is based on opposing dramas within the self-nature. 
Commentary: The self nature includes all dharma doors, and so it is called the star enveloping consciousness. This is the eighth consciousness which may be transformed into the wisdom of the great perfect mirror. If you give rise to thinking and considering, the star enveloping consciousness turns to the seventh consciousness, which in turn produces the six consciousnesses. Which go out the six organs and perceive the six sense objects. If you use the self nature correctly, it is the Buddha use. But if you misuse it, you are just a living being. How do the different usages arise? They come from the opposites within the self nature. Sutra: External insentient things have the five have five pairs of opposites: heaven and earth. Sun and moon, light and darkness, yin and yang, and water and fire. In speaking of the marks of dharmas, one should delineate twelve opposites: speech and dharmas, existence and non-existence, form and formlessness, the marked and the unmarked, the presence of outflows and the lack of outflows, form and emptiness, motion and stillness, clarity and turbidity, the common and the holy, membership in the sangha. And membership in plenty, old age and youth, the largeness and smallness. From the self nature, nineteen pairs of opposites arise: length and shortness, deviancy and orthodoxy, foolishness and wisdom, stupidity and intelligence, confusion and concentration, kindness and cruelty, morality and immorality, straightness and crookedness. Reality and unreality, danger and safety, affliction and body, permanence and impermanence, compassion and harm, joy and anger, generosity and stinginess, advance and retreat, production and extinction, the dharma body and the form body, the transformation body and the reward body. The master said. If you can understand and use these thirty-six pairs of opposites, you can connect yourself with the dharmas of all the sutras and avoid extremes, whether coming or going. When you act from your self nature in speaking with others, you are separate from external marks while in the midst of them, and separate from inward emptiness while in the midst of emptiness. If you are attached to marks, you will add to your wrong views, and if you grasp at emptiness, you will increase your ignorance. Commentary: Opposite means mutually dependent and mutually opposed. Nineteen opposites arise as a function of the true such in its self nature. For example, if there was no long, there would be no short. Long is the opposite of short, and short is the opposite of long. Long and short are relative terms, and between them is the middle way. Kindness bestows happiness and is the opposite of cruelty. Morality and immorality are opposites. Morality is the practice of all good actions and the absence of all evil. Compassion pulls living beings out of suffering and is the opposite of harmfulness. Generosity means giving. If you can give, you are not stingy. The dharma body pervades all places and is the opposite of the form body. Sutra: Those who grasp a emptiness slander slander the sutras by maintaining that written words have no use. Since they maintain they have no need of written words, they should not speak either, because written words are merely the marks of spoken language. They also maintain that the direct way cannot be established by written words, and yet these two words, not established, are themselves written. When they hear others speaking, they slander them by saying that they are attached to written words. You should know that to be confused, as they are, may be permissible, but to slander the Buddha Sutras is not. Do not slander the sutras, for if you do, your offense will create countless obstacles for you. One who attaches himself to external marks and practices dramas in search of truth, or who builds many Buddha mandalas and speaks of the error and evil of existence and non-existence, will not see his nature for many ends. Listen to the dharma and cultivate accordingly. 
Do not think of the hundred things for that will obstruct the nature of the way. Listening without cultivating will cause others to form different views. Simply cultivate according to the Dharma and do not draw in marks when bestowing it. Commentary People who are attached to emptiness say that they don't need anything at all. They say that it isn't necessary to study the sutras. They say that they don't use written words. Everything's empty. They say don't use words. Words are nothing but an attachment to marks. If that is so, then nobody should even speak because written words are simply the visible manifestation of spoken language. They also say the direct mind is the Bodhimandala. Do not set up written words, but unless you quit speaking altogether, you still have language, and the phrase do not set up is itself made up of words. Your own confusion is your own busyness. The master adds, but do not slander the Buddha Sutra. You should refrain from thinking, for if you do, you fall into a, a useless, dull kind of emptiness. You should cultivate in the way I have instructed you. Do not become attached to appearances. Sutra, if you understand, then speak accordingly, function accordingly, practice accordingly, and act accordingly, and you will not stray from the basis of our school. If someone asks you about a meaning, and the question is about existence, answer with non-existence. If you are asked about non-existence, answer with existence. Asked about the common life, answer with the holy life. Asked about the holy life, answer with the common life. Since in each case the two principles are interdependent, the mean of the middle way will arise between them. If you answer every question with an opposite, you will not stray from the basic principle. Suppose someone asked, what is darkness? You should answer, brightness is the cause and darkness is darkness the condition. When there is no brightness, there is darkness. Brightness reveals darkness, and darkness reveals brightness. Since the opposites are interdependent, the principle of the middle way is established. Answer every question that way, and in the future you will you transmit the drama, transmit it the way I am instructing you. Then you will not stray from the tradition of our school. Commentary. If you answer every question with an opposite dharma, you will deviate from the basic principle of the sudden enlightenment doctrine. Sutra, in the seventh month of the year Jamsu, the first year of the Taichu and Yan Hu reigns, CA 712 AD, the master sent his disciples to Sintro to build a pagoda at Kua and temple. He ordered them to hurry the work, and it was completed by the end of the summer of the following year. Commentary During the cyclical year, Chen Tzu, the reign, was renamed twice. In the fifth month, it was changed from Tai Chu to Yan Ho. In the seventh month, the emperor abdicated in favor of his son and in the eighth month, the reign was renamed Xian Tian. Xin Chou was the master's homeland. His disciples built a pagoda there so that the master's body might rest in it after his death. Sutra. On the first day of the seventh month, he gathered his disciples together and said, In the eighth month, I wish to leave this world. Those of you with doubts should ask about them soon so that I may reserve them for you and put an end to your confusion because when I am gone there will be no one to teach you. Hearing this far high and the others wept, only Shen Hui was unmoved and did not cry. The master said, Little Master Shen Hui has attained to the equality of good and evil. He is not moved by blame or praise and does not feel sadness or joy. None of the rest of you have attained that. All these years on the mountain, how have you been cultivating? Now you cry. Who are you worrying about? Are you worrying that I don't know where I'm going? 
I know where I'm going. If I didn't know, I wouldn't have been able to tell you about it in advance. No doubt you are crying because you don't know where I'm going. But if you knew, you wouldn't need to cry. Originally, the drama nature is not produced or extinguished. It does not come or go. Commentary The great master rang the bell and beat the drum. The sound rang out some morning all of his disciples to his side. Pay attention, he said. In the eighth month of this year, I'm going to leave this world. Then here he is again, far high, number one. He didn't even list the names of the other disciples. He just said, far high and the others. They all wept. Their eyes ran with tears and their noses ran with snot, just like children who have lost their mother and have no milk to drink. Wah, wah. They cried like babies. Some of them cried in secret, some cried openly, and some faked tears, fearing it would be bad manners not to cry along with everyone else. There was both truth and falsehood in the situation. It was exactly like a play. But the youngest of the babies did not cry. Was it because he was too young to understand or care that he was about to lose his mother, or in, in this case his teacher? Was it that? No. Shen Wei was young in years but old in wisdom. He understood the principle of not moving in any state. Mencius was 40 years old before he reached that level with an unmoving mind. They praise, you are not pleased, it's gold, you are not annoyed. They say you work hard, you are not moved. They say you're lazy, no matter what, you are not moved. However, when you are really being lazy and someone scolds you, you can't say, I have somebody, he doesn't bother me at all. You must have a true unmoving mind, like that of little Shen Wei. The Sikh Bajra called Shen Hui Little Master. In the first ten years after taking precepts, one is called a Little Master or Junior Seated. From ten to twenty years, one is Middle Seated. And from twenty to thirty years, one is Senior Seated. Little Master Shen Hui is better than all of you, the Master said, because he doesn't have a discriminating mind. He has truly turned his consciousness into wisdom. Shen Hui was not moved by praise or blame. The Dharma master does not cultivate. All he does is run after women. Criticism like that didn't bother him. He really works hard. Not only does he not sleep, he doesn't even lie down. And he only eats once a day. Such an austerity. Praise like that didn't affect him either. If you don't react, then people can slander you, but it's as if nothing happened. You're a pig, you may say, fine. But you answer, I'm a pig, no problem. If you don't react, then they can praise you, and it doesn't matter either. You have both virtue and learning, they may say, but you pay no attention. If you are pleased when someone praises your learning, then you really have no learning at all. If you get angry when someone scolds you, you have been influenced by an outside state. To be unmoved by any state is to neither grasp nor reject, neither love nor hate. You can tell little Master Shen Hui that he is good, but he will not be happy. You can tell him he is bad, but he will not get angry. He has no thoughts of misery or delight. There truly is complete understanding of the middle way, rare indeed. You old ones, the master said, you middle-aged ones, none of you passes, none of you has outweighed the fire. When anger says you're a blaze, you should think, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, then get angry. Then you wait, and your anger disappears. That is called outweighing the fire. If you don't wait, the fire burns, but if you can wait, it will die out. When steel is red hot, you can shape it into a vessel. But unless you wait for the fire to burn it red hot, you can't mold the metal. You haven't outweighed the fire. You have been on the mountain for so many years, said the master. What have you been doing all this time, huh? You hear that I'm going to complete the stillness and you cry like babies. You're all worthless. 
you have how have you been cultivating by eating and sleeping are you upset because you think i don't know where i'm going i will tell you something i do know of course i know there is no reason for you to worry about me i can take care of myself no big no small no within or without you cultivate you understand you make the arrangements yourself sutra All of you sit down, and I will recite a verse called the True False Motion Stillness Verse. If you take it up and recite it, you will be the of the same mind as I am. If you rely on it to cultivate, you will not stray from the true principle of our school. The assembly bowed and begged the master to recite the verse. There is nothing true in anything, so don't view anything as true. If you view anything as true, Your view will be completely false. You can now what is you can know what is true by yourself. Being apart from the false is the truth of the mind. When your own mind is not apart from the false and lacks the truth, then where is the truth? Commentary. Now don't be nervous. The master said, "Sit down and don't jump, jump around. Don't cry right in front of me like that." Really, you are undisciplined disciples. Listen to my verse. It discusses the true and the false of the principles of motion and stillness. If you can understand it and bear it in mind, you won't deviate from the sudden teaching. Turn the light around. The master said, "The master shine inside at your own self nature, and you can know the truth." To find your true mind is simply to separate yourself from all the false forms and images of this world. If there is no truth within your own mind, where will you find the truth? The truth is not apart from the self nature. Apart from the self nature, there is no truth. Sutra: Sentient beings understand motion. Insentient beings do not move. If you cultivate the work of non-movement, like insentient beings, you will not move. If you seek the true non-movement, in movement there is non-movement. Non-movement is non-movement. But things without sentience, like the Buddha seed, fully able to discriminate among marks, but unmoving in the primary meaning, the very act of viewing in this way itself is the function of true suchness. Commentary: Do not seek on movement apart from movement, for it is just. Within movement, that stillness can be found. All sentient beings move, but if you can be still while remaining sentient, that is true non-movement. If, as a sentient being, you are able to clearly distinguish the marks of all dharmas, not with your consciousness but with wisdom, you can give proof to、so、the attainment of the substantive principle of your self-nature and achieve the ultimate state. That is true. Proper non-movement. Sutra. I tell you, students of the way, apply your minds with effort and take care. At the gate of the great vehicle, do not grasp the wisdom and birth and death. If there is response at these words, then let us discuss the Buddha's meaning together. If there is no response, join your hands together and make others glad. The basis of this school is non-contention. Contention is not the meaning of the way, for in grasping at the drama doors of contradiction and contention, the self nature enters birth and death. Come and read your face to face with the great Vihago Buddha drama. Do not continue to grasp at your understanding, which binds you up in birth and death. At the kind of wisdom that is still attached to marks. If you can't understand what I'm trying to tell you, then put your hands together to please living beings. My school of sudden enlightenment is based on the cultivation of the patience of unproduced dramas. There should be no debating. When you argue with others, you lose the meaning of the way. Debating the thoughts of victory and defeat stand in contradiction to the way. Giving rise to the four mark mind, how can samadhi be obtained? If you insist on arguing, the self-nature won't escape in the 
revolving wheel, giving rise to the marks of a cell for others, living beings, and a life, you will certainly continue to undergo birth and death. Sutra. When the followers heard this verse, they understood its meaning and bowed down before the master. They made up their minds to practice in accord with the Dharma and not to argue. Knowing that the great master would not remain long in the world, the Seno seated far high, bowed again and asked, After the high master enters extinction, who will inherit the robe and Dharma? Commentary, far high, never forgets himself. No doubt he wanted the robe and bow for himself. Sutra, the master said, since the time I lectured on the drama in the Fatan temple, transcriptions of my lectures have been circulated. They are to be called the Dharma Jewel Platform Sutra, protect and transmit them in order to take humankind across. If you speak according to them, you will be speaking the orthodox drama. I will explain the drama to you, but I will not transmit the rope because your rules of faith are pure and ripe. You certainly have no doubts and are worthy of the great work according to the meaning of the transmission verse of the first Vajrayaka Bodhi Dharma. The rope should not be transmitted. His verse said, Originally, I came to this land transmitting drama, saving living beings. One flower opens, five petals and the food comes to bear of itself. Commentary, the students didn't have the tape recorders as we do, so they wrote down their notes with brush and ink and compared them among themselves. You should uh, take good care of these lectures, the master said. They are Dharma drawers, print and distribute them, and so take living beings across. I know that you won't believe in me, and so I don't need to transmit the rope. Besides, the great master Bodhidharma said that, beginning with the sixth patriarch, the rope should not be transmitted. He said, I originally came to China in order to transmit the right dharma and take across all these confused living beings. From me, this one flower, in the future five petals, will open the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth patriarchs and the food will come to bear of itself. That is, there will be no need to transmit the rope. Transmitting the drama will surface. This is why the fifth patriarch told the sixth patriarch, as the rope is the source of contention, do not transmit it. Should you continue to transmit it, your life will hang by a thread. The fruit comes to bear of itself. You should know that the fruit which ripens in this line is just all of you who have taken refuge with me. The first character of your dharma name is Guo, and it means the fruit horizont. So don't forget to repent. It, all of you should repent right away. Most importantly, don't be lazy. Bodhidharma gave you all predictions long ago. The sixth patriarch himself said, The body fruit accomplishes itself. They both knew that in the future, there would be all of you disciples in America with the first name Kua fruit. The fruit they spoke of is just all of you. That fruit is you. You are that fruit. The two are one.